committee meeting of today. After a long recess, I hope you are coming back um, refined and uh, energized. Let, let me, without any further waste of time, say, honorable members, effective management of disciplinary cases in the public service remain the main priority of this portfolio committee. Inefficient discipline management lead to state spending millions of monies on suspended employees while sitting at home and earning a salary. Therefore, we have invited both the Department of Public Service and Administration and the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation to account to the committee on the effective management of disciplinary cases <laughs> and challenges encountered in the implementation of policy on the disciplinary cases for senior managers in the public service. With those few words, let me once again welcome Recording you all in progress. to this uh, portfolio committee. Let me also uh, make the committee aware that uh, the item on National School of Government is, is, is now taken back for refinement and fine tuning by, by cabinet. Therefore, the NSG is not going to present today. And I must apologize to you, uh, Professor Ngaweni, you were not aware of this, but I thought I must, I must make this uh, announcement well in advance. Once again, we apologize to you. Uh, I have seen that you have logged in, you are part of the meeting. Mastole, can, can, I, can I check if there are any apologies for today's meeting? Yes, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good morning to you, Chair, uh, honorable members, ministers, and uh, colleagues. We only have one apology, Chair, from members. It's uh, Honorable Kondwe. Uh, we also have a few apologies from the departments, uh, uh, the acting minister, uh, Minister Nwesi, uh, Deputy Minister, uh, Minister Kekane, and there's also um, a Minister Kungubele in the presidency. They've apologized because they've got um, other uh, pressing issues, Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mastroli. Can I now invite the, the, the deputy? the deputy minister to, to, to make her opening remarks before the presentation. Uh, thank you, Chair. Honorable deputy minister, you can take the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning. Um, let me also just uh, greet the members of the a portfolio committee on public service and administration, uh, the officials present here today uh, to say that indeed today we're going to actually be providing a briefing by the Department of Public Service and Administration on effective management of disciplinary cases and challenges encountered in the implementation of, po of the policy on disciplinary cases for senior managers in the public service. And indeed, like you've actually indicated that your, um, in your introduction, Chair, our concern within public service would be uh, the number of suspensions that we have of people who are not really in the employment but are sitting at home um, and a government actually providing lots of monies um, on a monthly basis, uh, which actually articulates to uh, figures uh, that are concerning. We have continued to build systems within public service. Uh, the systems are not, are not perfect yet. Uh, challenges are with uh, capturing of data across government, even within the provinces. We are not really happy about that, but we are continuing to try and improve those systems. 
with those few words, I'm going to ask the DG to actually make the presentation. Thank you, Chair. G, take the floor, please. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, good morning. Good morning to the Honorable Members to the deputy minister, as well as colleagues who are joined in the meeting. Um, minister um, uh, Chaperson, I'm going to, I have a colleague who is the head responsible for this work on discipline management, Mr. Um, um, uh, <coughs> apologies, <coughs> Dr. Solomon, who's going to be making a presentation today. I do want, however, I will come back and just uh, make my comments after he has uh, made the presentation uh, in terms of strengthening some of the few areas and uh, areas of focus in respect to this presentation. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Dr. Solomon, please. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good morning, Chairperson, um, Deputy Minister, um, DG and all protocols observed. Um, I'm going to present on the um, issue of discipline management. I just want to check if you can see my presentation. Can, I can see it. Thank you, sir. Then let me continue. Um, my, my brief was to brief the portfolio committee on the effective management of disciplinary cases. That is the first part of the presentation. And the second part is to also um, look at the challenges encountered in the implementation of the policy on the disciplinary cases for senior managers in the public service. Now, um, if one looks at the uh, FOSAT reports that the um, Technical Assistance Unit um, drafted the past two years, it's very clear that that the backlog in misconduct cases are still increasing and the backlog in precautionary suspensions are also increasing and that there's a stabilization of the suspensions around 82 million for provinces and 25 million for national departments. But I must also add that the data of, that I'm going to present today only reflects that information that departments capture on PASOL. Now, the past two years, the increase, if we look at misconduct cases itself, then in March 2021 to March 2022, for national departments, it increased for, from 651 cases to 1,890 cases. But one must also then take in mind that in 2020, there was um, COVID-19, and because of um, that, those challenges, there were not a lot of... Um, misconduct cases or disciplinary cases. So that may also um, have led to the um, increase in departmental and national and provincial department misconduct cases. If one look at the provincial departments from March 2021 to March 2022, it increased from 2004 to 2,517. Now, if one looks at the um, tables where one can compare the quarter four period in 2021 to the quarter four period in 2022 for misconduct, in terms of national departments, we saw in quarter four of 2021 that 71% of misconduct cases were finalized. And that um, can be contributed to the effort that the DPSA that is now the Minister for the Public Service and Administration, the DG, the um, TAU unit um, had when they uh, launched a project to address misconduct. And that then resulted in a 71% um, uh, closure finalization rate for misconduct. In quarter four for 2022, that dropped to 33%. In provincial departments, it was 31% in 2021 and it increased with 1% to 32% in 2022. Now, if one then looks at the, the number of cases that were resolved within the 90 days time frame, if one look at um, quarter four in 2021, um, you can see of the 71% cases finalized, 68% were within the 90 days time framework. 
And of course, if you have less cases to look at, 33%, then you can resolve those within the 90 days time frame, which is 97% for the national departments. In provincial departments, it was um, 20% in 2021, and it um, increased to 62% for provincial departments. So there is a, a very slight improvement in terms of um, provincial departments finalizing the misconduct cases, but there's a better um, resol uh, uh, resolution rate in terms of the 90 days time frame. Now, going to the next slide, um, if one look at the precautionary suspensions um, for 2020-21 and then 21-22, the number of employees in national departments placed on precautionary suspension was 151. And of this 151, 52% of the cases were finalized. And that were to a cost of 20 million, 20.6 million. In 2021, 2022, 229 employees in national departments were placed on precautionary suspension. And 50, uh, only 32% of those cases were finalized. And that is to an amount of 23.3 million. If we look at the provincial departments, the, for the 2020-2021 financial year, 241 um, the provincial departmental employees were placed in precautionary suspension and 78% of those cases were finalized. Um, to a, a, a tune of 62.5 million rand for quarter four. Now that dropped in this 2021-22 uh, financial year to from 241 to 193. And only 28% of those cases were finalized. And the, the difference between the previous year and that uh, from a high finalization to a low finalization rate can also be attributed to a project or intervention that the DPSA launched in terms of addressing discipline management. And I will refer to that a bit later. So the total cost for the um, uh, quarter four for the um, provincial departmental employees that were placed on suspension is um, 81.4 million rand. Now, <clears throat> looking at this dismal figures, um, the DPSA in 2020-21 then went and launched a, a project um, with the Minister for the Public Service and Administration, the DG and the Technical Assistance Unit that prioritized certain departments that had high um, uh, ba backlogs and um, then intervened in quarter three. And uh, this entailed one-on-one -on -one sessions where the minister um, engaged the ministers of those departments. And then it was followed by sessions where the DG had um, sessions with the DGs of those departments and where um, the technical assistance unit moved in and then assessed the situation on the ground to see what is the um, area of assistance they need and where we provided them with um, workshops to address shortcomings, but also templates to assist them with um, capturing their information and with um, sharing that information to the DPSA on a monthly progress, uh, or, or with a monthly basis with progress reports so that it could be monitored and that um, this situation could be um, addressed. The idea was to um, share um, best practices to assist and to help and um, we saw that that intervention, although it was quite intensive um, in terms of resources and human resources from the DPSA side, it, uh, it really had a, a good impact on the figures. Now, due to that intervention, 71% of the national departments then finalized their disciplinary cases by the end of quarter four. But if we look at 2021, 2022, when the, uh, the DPSA moved out of that um, mode of um, uh, intensive, actually hand-holding, this improvement was not sustained. Now, looking at the long overdue suspensions, the same intervention 
also looked at all those departments who had suspensions that were one year to five years. And um, the, the same method was used where the Minister for the Public Service and Administration would engage the EAs and the, the DG would engage the um, DGs. And um, they, were, they would have been um, technical assistants. And what one found was that a number of new cases were then um, <coughs> identified that were not recorded on partial, and those cases were then registered and brought onto the system so that it could be um, uh, actually managed. Now, as a result, then 78% of the precautionary suspensions were finalized by provinces. And due to that intervention, one saw that from quarter three to quarter four in the 2020-2021 um, uh, 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 financial year, the cost of precautionary suspensions in KwaZulu-Natal, for example, who had the most um, precautionary suspensions, um, then decreased with 60 million. In 2021-2022, the cost for suspensions are actually higher, um, although there's less employees suspended. And that indicates that um, uh, um, definitely more high-ranking officials are suspended. Now, that br brings me to the second part of the presentation that um, addresses the issue of challenges that's encountered now in the implementation of the policy on disciplinary cases for senior managers in the public service. And this uh, part do not deal with the issue of HODs and such, because that would be the prerogative of the presidency. So if one look at the challenges encountered, um, it's uh, from the data that we could find on partial, it's clear that um, there's not a lot of data on SMS managers um, being um, uh, um, identified for misconduct, captured, or either it's incorrect, uh, incorrectly captured, and therefore it also skews a proper analysis of um, this part of the presentation. But if we look at all the cases that is on partial from the 1st of January 2018 to the 31st of July 2022, then we found that 204 um, uh, SMS members were um, charged for misconduct and that those cases were completed. Now, of this, 119 were males and 85 females. Going to the next slide, if one look at the, um, the um, misconduct cases, the, the time frames um, of the 204 cases, 47 were um, resolved before the 90 days um, cutoff, 41 days thereafter, and 116 are still pending. Um, the average time it takes to complete a misconduct case is 160 days. And if one looks at the 204 um, SMS members suspended, then the average uh, number of days for them to be suspended is 62. Now, um, the, the poor capturing of information for SMS members may also be the same symptoms that we find with the um, poor capturing of other um, uh, disciplinary cases, um, especially where we found when we did the interventions that not all the cases are reported to labor relations, and especially that of SMS members, and therefore they're not captured on partial. And that the, there's really a poor internal monitoring or oversight of disciplinary cases by the departments. And one must remember that discipline management in terms of the Public Service Act is the responsibility of an accounting officer, and they must um, put in necessary measures to make sure that um, disciplinary action are taken and that record are kept with that. Mm -hmm. Then the last thing is then also that um, we found that there's not real consequences for those who do not capture data on partial, who of course that um, goes with the internal uh, monitoring of disciplinary cases. <clears throat> now, if one look at the, um, the aspects that complicate the implementation of discipline management for senior managers, um, what we found is that um, 
there is a hesitancy to um, really just take action against a senior uh, member, especially level of DDG and DG, because it has an impact on service delivery and culture of an organization. And that may lead to unnecessary delays to commence with the disciplinary hearing. But then also, in terms of SMS members, it's um, very difficult to secure role players like the presiding officers and employer representatives to um, assist with disciplinary cases for SMS members. And then there's also, um, although the, the uh, SMS handbook allows for it, there's a reluctance to use non-SMS members to initiate and chair against SMS members. And also, as I've indicated, a reluctance of SMS members to assist. Then, of course, um, if it is a senior a, a person that is um, being disciplined, there's a reluctance of the subordinates to testify against those um, seniors in fear of victimization. And then we also have uh, uh, the issue um, where the labor relations units um, sometimes are not involved in cases involving SMS members. And that not only results in a non-compliance with the SMS handbook, but where data do not get um, recorded and captured on the parcel system so that the, the TAU unit and the DPSA can play a monitoring role. Um, unwarranted use of legal representation in cases that are not legally complex, although there's clear um, guides in the PSCBC resolution about the use of legal representation, we found that when there's SMS members involved, that um, there's usually legal representation. And sometimes those cases are not legally complex, but because the um, legal um, representation also has a private practice and they um, have other cases, then cases get to be delayed and complicated. Now, if one look at the, pre, um, the, the prolonged suspensions, <clears throat> one found that in terms of SMS members, there is a, 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 a pattern where delays are caused by forum shopping of those SMS members being disciplined. And they then refer, refer the same matters um, that's under disciplinary to the EA, to the OPSC, to the bargaining council, um, requesting interventions, and then thereby causing delays in the process and halting processes so that um, some processes can be finalized before uh, the next step of processes. And that leads to very long um, precautionary suspensions. But then also the issue of employees who avoid, who are trying to avoid to face disciplinary hearings, they um, um, request postponements. And there's no limit on the number of postponements that one can have. But also on the flip side of employers who are trying to keep some employees out of work through suspensions, although there's no strong case, but they then keep on postponing um, cases as well because there's no limit currently on a number of postponements. Then the last um, uh, uh, complicating factor, what we have um, observed as the DPSA is where SMS members are victimized when they are um, uh, especially exposing certain wrongdoing and um, then they request the assistance of the DPSA uh, by writing to the DG or via the hotline requesting to intervene in disciplinary actions. And of course, the DPSA, the minister, and the, the unit do not have any legal mandate or mandate at all to intervene in disciplinary cases of um, uh, uh, national and provincial departments. But um, that we could see there that there is the fear of um, suspension or abuse of power or victimization. And this includes usually DDGs. DGs and executive authorities. Now, <clears throat> looking at all the issues that has been identified in terms of addressing um, uh, 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 poor discipline and consequence managing the public service, this is an issue that is now um, coming a long way. The, um, the first um, attempt was to get the databases sought 
um, so that we can actually see what is going on in the ground. We found that there is an improvement in the, the number of um, uh, 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 reporting of um, cases, the capturing of that on partial. And um, although not uh, still a true reflection, it's better than it was in the past, but um, with uh, having a better picture, one can also um, address the um, situation with better medicine. The one thing that we are currently looking at is to address the issue of non-compliance, where um, the heads of departments or the um, accounting officers do not submit letters of um, uh, uh, the statistics to the DPSA, where these um, uh, are now addressed in FOSAT by the DG, and um, where non-compliance letters are written to them to indicate to them that um, they are in breach and that they need to um, supply the um, necessary information. Of course, um, the, we also have quarterly FOSAT reports where we um, in detail analyze the um, uh, submissions and that is then submitted to the minister for the public service and administration and routed to FOSAT for them to take note. Then there's also already work done in the DPSA to address the issue of capturing of data, where we especially focused on um, the parcel system, which although it's a personnel salary system and not a, 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 a intelligence or a information center, we looked at uh, ways that we could um, address the categorization of discipline management data, where there were quite a number of um, departments who had their own um, categories on partial, and now I'm talking about the correctional services, the Department of Defense, um, uh, then there was also um, uh, 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 SAPS who had their own categorization, but if you are, for example, in the DPSA and you want to capture information, you have to scroll through all the data looking for a category where you can then um, uh, 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 record that incident. And this was uh, really cumbersome for the, um, the uh, employees, the data capturers, and we have um, standardized that now where we don't have different categories between the um, different departments anymore, but one set of categories for all in the public service and more crisp and clear so that when we do mine the information, we have a better sense of what is going on. We also automated some of the reporting processes by providing the departments with electronic forms that they can capture information on so that um, we can extract that information from where we are and then can report to FOSAT so that there's a better picture on um, discipline management in the different um, spheres. Um, but then, of course, we continued with training and awareness with uh, the previous financial year. We had um, almost 214 um, public servants trained as presiding officers, but also um, looking at the HR officials and managers. And we also trained the data capturers so that they can um, understand when they capture data on parcel that um, if the principle of garbage in, garbage out really is um, important to take note of because we need to um, get information that we can actually make um, good deductions on. And then what we're currently busy with is um, to develop a new discipline management strategy. Some of the elements that I've talked about now is short-term strategy where you can um, intervene. Although if you look at um, something like partial, it's not that quick and um, easy, but um, that is short-term things. But in the strategy, we also want to address um, the new strategy, discipline management strategy that we want to develop for the public service. We will also address um, the long-term issues, uh, which is about um, legislation and changes in legislation um, especially looking at the public service, uh, the PSCBC resolution one of where we can um, uh, focus on uh, you know, in innovative ways to address um, changes so that we can speed up the process. We're currently in um, a consultation with all the provinces and all the um, national departments so uh, that we can um, draft the strategy to be ready for um, the next financial year. Um, and the, the strategy focuses on especially three um, pillars.
others one can indicate. The one is the legislation, as I've indicated. And then the second one, the implementation challenges, which, which is what I've addressed in point one and two, looking at the non-compliance issues. And then lastly, the issue of culture, because um, discipline management is not, uh, um, uh, you cannot divorce them that from the other processes in government, where if you have um, wrong uh, HR processes, employment processes and that, that you think you can uh, address discipline management in isolation. Um, where you have issues with um, uh, uh, employees blowing the whistle and then get um, disciplined for that, um, all of those need to be addressed under the um, culture um, pillar. And then lastly, we also um, uh, already engaged on consultations with um, the departments, national and provincial departments, to review the disciplinary code. Chair, okay, I thank you. This is my presentation. Thank you very much. The presentation is now open for discussion. Can I see honorable members who want to? Honorable Kibi and honorable Maneli, honorable, who's this one? It might myself, it might be myself, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's iPhone. It's rejecting yes, it's the iPhone. Naming. Yeah, it's rejecting the naming. Okay, it will be you then. And then I see that Honorable um, Mutsipe is also in. Is that true? Because it, oh. And then Honorable Maneli, Honorable Magua, in that order. And Honorable Komani, you can take the floor. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning to all the Honorable Members. Uh, good morning to all the colleagues. Uh, Honorable Chair, I request to switch off my a camera because I'm having a network edge challenges. If I'm allowed, Honorable Chair. Yeah, I know you're allowed. You are allowed, Honorable Kibi. Uh, Honorable Chair, thank you. I want to appreciate and welcome the presentation. Uh, but come, uh, Honorable Chair, it's so disappointing uh, to have a, a lot of cases that are not really handled in, in good time. And uh, one other thing is to hear about the poor capturing of disciplinary cases uh, on PESAL, uh, poor capturing of cases, knowing that, of course, uh, the responsibility lies with the heads of those particular departments. But I want to know is there anything that uh, can be done by the department to put in place certain measures to pressure the senior managers to make sure that they act on those that are not doing their job and are not doing their job in good time? Uh, the postponing of cases, uh, Honorable Chair, where sometimes there is no uh, case uh, according to the presentation, or maybe there is not enough evidence uh, that has been given, or, and also on the fear of victimization. Uh, what measures can you put in place to avoid this fear, as this has implications on e service delivery? Because at the end of the day, that is what uh, is, is happening. Uh, again, Honorable Chair, I one understands there was a, a intervention or maybe uh, the minister had a one-on-one -on -one with his colleagues. I, I want to know what was revealed to him to, to be the, the, the main stumbling block to deal with timely, uh, with disciplinary cases so that they can be, uh, to stop all these delays, uh, cases can be handled in good time. And also what kind of technical assistance 
was provided in, in the form of workshop to address the shortcomings. And also why was the intervention not sustained in 2021 and in 2022? But one is quite aware that it's a, it's a, the presenter did raise the issue of the situation when we were in the COVID uh, era. But uh, one just wants to know uh, what was the intervention? Why was the interventions not uh, sustained? I thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kibi. Honorable Manel. Thank you, Chair. And greetings to honorable members. Chairperson, let me also welcome the presentation. Uh, in welcoming the presentation, Chair, I will, I will I would like to ask a few questions in terms of the total cost for precautionary suspension, Chairperson. So Chairperson, with the cost of suspensions as reported to being the ones that are only captured on PESA to the value of 82 million for provinces and 25 million for national departments. What does that mean to the cost of the bigger people chairperson and also chair i would like to know as to what happens when the suspended officials lose their cases in terms of the salary that they've been drawing up to the date of being found guilty and also chair i would like to check if there is any precedent on monies that are being recovered once the the the, the employees are being found guilty is money recovered from date of suspension or from the date of being found guilty? And also, Chair, I will, I will also like to check that in the, in the last uh, slide of presentation, if you can just be provided with the time frame as to when will the review be or an anticipation on when will the review be done. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Manelli. Honorable McClure. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, uh, I, I jumped I, you, Honorable Ntuli. Okay, you will come after Honorable McClure. Sorry for that, Honorable Ntuli. Thank you, Chair. I just want to to raise the following uh, the following questions uh, pertaining to allegations uh, which we believe it's of a public interest and also the outcome or uh, uh, of the pro process in uh, when it comes to disciplinary hearings uh, if the department can just uh, explain to, to 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 us in how do they deal with the, 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 the reporting thereof? Because I'm, I'm asking this because we, we had in past meetings a particular case whereby you not being, being uh, informed about the outcomes of a disciplinary uh, process. And then also, Chairperson, uh, I think it's almost a year now that there has been a report and allegations of, of corruption within the Department of, of Health. And uh, there are investigations underway of forensic uh, audits within the Department of, 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 of Health. But uh, is, is the department in a position to inform us as to whether any any disciplinary uh, case has been made against a senior of officials. What is the status thereof? Uh, because uh, to date, we haven't heard anything and uh, almost uh, 850 million rent was involved here. And uh, in this particular, uh, uh, some of the whistleblowers as well, and that we have lost uh, uh, some of these whistleblowers through assassination. And uh, may, if it, it's possible that the department also 
also, you know, uh, lay out perhaps their role and their part pertaining to the protection uh, with particular reference to uh, whistleblowers. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Ntuli, come in now. I apologize Thank for skipping you. No, no problem, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, may I join the um, uh, the speakers before me in welcoming the, the report? Chair, safe to say, um, uh, Honorable Gibi did cover me uh, on, on some of the issues that I've jotted down here. But Chairperson, I want to, to register my, my concern and my disappointment to the department that uh, as the portfolio committee, we've been uh, on this issue since the beginning of the term. And look now, we are towards the tail end of the term. That means uh, nothing has happened. For me, Chair, I, I don't understand as to why there are no serious um, disciplinary, disciplinary uh, measures that are put in place. If you hear that there are poor records keeping, but no, there are no consequences thereafter. And there is the reluctance and, and there's no a, 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 a consequences. And uh, for me, Chair, in the meeting, I don't think uh, we've done our level best in addressing this issue. After the launch of the, of the project, it showed the, the decrease, but soon after that, it went high again, meaning that uh, people are doing as they like. They are doing as they feel because there is nothing that they are fearing of here. And I want to add my voice to Honorable Kibi to say without firm disciplinary measures that are put in place, we are always going to hear one and the same story. And two, Chair, I heard that uh, in some cases, uh, uh, the labor unit is not involved. And I began to ask myself as to, as to why. Uh, Chair, can I, can, I, can I switch my video? As to why, um, the labor unit is not even involved in, in such, you see, misconduct cases are totally unacceptable. And this thing of prolonging uh, this suspension, su 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 uh, suspensions that are just milking government instead of the, the, the funds being used uh, for service delivery. Now it's used for paying people who are sitting down and doing nothing. I think uh, on this one, Jefferson, uh, we, we've, we've failed. We've really failed uh, as the government of this country. We've, we've really failed the electorate that is looking upon us uh, 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 to, to service them. There's a lot of money and there is this yo-yo system. It goes down, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up and people are sitting there. No, uh, Chairperson, that, that is my take. Thank you. Honorable Mtipe. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I'm also apologizing for not switching my, my video. I've got a concern, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, don't you have, I would like to say, don't you have any proper mechanism to fast track this process. There is no use to say 
there is slight improvement. We want drastic and finalized reports because we cannot sing one song always. We don't want percentage, we want finalized, perfect reports. If managers keep no proper data, maybe they know why. So those managers must also be brought to book. There must be a review of limit of the employees for, perf for postponement in order to finalize most of the issues before seventh parliament, because I see that this goes to the, to the seventh parliament. And I want to re reiterate on the precautionary suspension. Regarding precautionary suspension ranging from one to You are muted now, uh, Honorable. Uh, or oh, we this have lost case of personnel who acted in personal state, where they sitting their own salary and acting allowance as well. That's my intake, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Komani. Thank you very much, Chair, and good morning to honorable members as well in the department. And Chairperson, let me start by apologizing for not being able to unmute my, uh, to switch on my video due to uh, improper network. Uh, Chair, let us welcome and very disappointed the presentation by the department because chair like one of the honorable members has said we are almost at the tail end of the of, of the term yet this department has never never in its existence in our term brought anything tangible to this to this portfolio committee so i'm not sure if the department is really taking this committee for granted or it's like they know they're just going to present and tell the 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 the, 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 the committee that we have uh, there, there is progress. What progress, Che? We cannot speak of progress when there is none. Because we are dealing with the same department and we have been taken back and forth by merely prolonging the suspensions of the people. Is it the, the results of CADA deployment? Is it because they are, are, they are prolonging the, sus the suspensions because they do not want to, 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 to bring the matters to an end? So they, they are afraid uh, in, in one way or the other. It can't be correct. And this must be, uh, it, it must not be tolerated. We must, we must disregard it with the contempt it deserves. Because in a way, the department is misleading us. It's taking this, it's like this portfolio committee is not doing anything. Chairperson, we still have issues where, 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 where we've got inappropriate recording of the cases where we have got senior managers in the same departments should we what should we say about those depart, uh, what, uh, about those man, man, managers Chair? Do, should we say they are irresponsible should we say they are they are assisting this uh, the, uh, the government because what we are saying here the moment we prolong the precautionary suspensions Shepherdson, the same people whom are virtued to have done something wrong they are perceived as innocent until proven guilty. Yes, I agree. Why are we not concluding their disciplinary cases so that we prove their innocence or then they, 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 they are accounted for, uh, their misconduct is accounted for? Because Chairperson seated here, when you suspend a person between a year and five years, and at the same time, there's another person who should do the work. That person does not do the work as, 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 as expected because they will still have got that person who's earning from the department. And we need to know what is the total cost, Chairperson, of those, of those uh, 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 precautionary suspensions. Because like when we are seated here, we have been told from this uh, the, uh, minimal uh, progress being made. We have been told of, of, of precautionary suspensions that ranges from one year. Why can't we finish the cases, Chairperson? 
why is that what is wrong with this department so what so maybe from this meeting we should be told what intervention this committee must must suggest be done to this committee because this committee is less it is it is a committee that is milking the department that is milking the the, the, gov the government we are sitting here people are not getting service delivery outside there we are we came here to parliament to advance service delivery to the people we cannot be seated here for three years chairperson engaging on issues of salaries of people who have who are alleged to have done uh, wrong things no, it can't be, Chairperson. So I think the department must take us into confidence and they must tell us what are they, what is it that they are doing? What capacity are they bringing? And, 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 and if there is capacity, why is it not yielding any fruits to the department? Thank you very much for now, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Komani. Can I now invite the department for, for responses? Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. With your permission, Chairperson, can I ask Dr. Solomon and the team to uh, to take the technical questions, and then I'll I'll come after him. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, thanks, DG. Thanks, Chair. Um, thanks for the honourable members for um, uh, voicing your frustration, and also for giving some guidance and. Um, information that we can work for work with maybe just to answer some of the questions um the technical ones um if we look at the issue of non-compliance that is um, one of the, the biggest um, issues that we're currently dealing with and this is especially to address those heads of departments who do not capture the information or who do not um, uh, um, address the disciplinary cases so what we have done is in um, 22 and 2014 um, distributed um, circulars, 2012 and 2014, sorry. They indicated to the different departments what information they should um, disclose for the FOSAT reports, that, FOSAT reports that will go to FOSAT and um, what information is needed. So um, currently that information we track on a monthly basis when they submit it to us. And then we draft um, uh, monitoring in, uh, and evaluation reports um, for FOSAT um, every quarter. And yeah, we identify those departments that are non-compliant and the departments that do not um, play the role that they should play. The role of the DPSA and TAU um, is unfortunately not um, uh, extended to the to the um, uh, the, the degree that we can um, uh, involve ourselves in the um, disciplinary cases of provincial departments and national departments. We can monitor, we can monitor the implementation of discipline management and we can report on that. And um, that is what we're doing with the FOSAT reports. And um, there it's escalated then that the, um, the different DGs who um, see that they have cases where um, there's not any movement with the cases, um, that they can take note of that and that they can address that. <clears throat> and then um, if we look at the issue of um, victimization, there was a question whether there's measures in place to address the issue of uh, victimization. Victimization in terms of this will be addressed through the process that we as DPSA outlined in a reporting guide. In 2018, we developed a reporting guide for um, departments to implement where there, there must be a policy that they adopt to report unethical conduct, corruption, and also non-compliance to legislation. And this will then deal with the um, issue of a person also being victimized. And then following that process to report then to either an ethics officer or to the um, DG or um, whoever is then um, identified in that um, policy as one of the um, uh, instruments that can um, address reports. So um, uh, uh, the interventions, um, there was a question, what was revealed as the main stumbling blocks when discussion we had with the minister? I think that is the, the ones that we've um, flagged in the report as the, um, the main stumbling blocks. And of course, that is the internal 
issues that the departments can address. There was a number of departments that indicated that they had um, uh, monetary restrictions so that they could not um, employ more um, labor relations officials and therefore there was the issue that they were not um, uh, reported to labor relations because they also understaffed and overworked and so forth. And then um, there was a question of what technical assistance we provided as the unit to the different departments. When we went to the um, departments after the engagement of the ministers and the um, DGs, um, we had a practical approach where we asked the departments to bring us their, their cases, um, the files, so that we could assess what is in the files, and then also to make sure that they capture all those on partial. We went then through the files to see whether these, all the, the elements of the discipline management is intact and if they need some, some ex, um, training or some explanation or some assistance. And then we sat and we worked with them through those cases. It no, normally took two days to add that intervention. And with the hope was that when we do that, we will transfer some skills and we will also um, assist them so that when the um, case backlog is worked off, that they would then be in a better position to move um, the, the, the period thereafter. Um, why we did not um, continue with that is because there's um, not enough employees in the uh, town to be able to sustain this. And we saw that the moment that we withdraw, the department falls back to the old uh, default position. And actually it doesn't help when we sit and help, it would mean that we must withdraw all the resources we have only to um, then move to the provinces from one province to the other and repeat that and do the work for them. Um, because actually it's, it's work that they should know to do and should do themselves. But that is why we then said we will assist and see how it works and if we can um, depart some information and knowledge. But the best way would be to address this through fixing the strategy so that they then forced through a new strategy to in any case do the work that they, they should do and that we will be in a better position through um, the um, developing of a strategy to monitor, um, which is the role that we have to monitor and evaluate whether they then do the work that they should do. So um, it was just not sustainable from that sort of a point of view. Um, the um, further question was around the issue of the, the, the capturing the figure, the total cost for um, suspensions. Um, it's 82 million and 25 million for national departments. That is the figure that is for the, um, the quarter. It is not um, the true um, amount because I'm sure that there are some departments who did not um, uh, um, capture. I will not be in a position to know if someone did not capture it. So um, the, the, the um, estimated or guesstimated um, uh, uh, response should be that um, if we want to compare this to four or five years um, uh, previously, there's definitely an improvement in the capturing of information. For example, the, the last quarter of um, the previous financial year, we had all national departments submitting their, um, their, their records and their personal um, information, which um, did not happen before. So there's definitely a movement closer to reality on what is on the ground. Um, the issue of um, uh, suspensions, and if a person is on suspension, if the person must pay back that money, if a person is on suspension, the PSCBC resolution one is very clear. You can only suspend a person when that person is going to interfere with the case, the uh, people, or tamper with evidence. So, and that is for serious misconduct that the suspension should be for. And then in that uh, regard, when a person is on suspension, it is um, the employer that actually say to the, uh, the person, we suspend you for a while, I do still pay you, but I want to make sure that um, there is enough evidence if you're guilty so that you can be found guilty and then leave. So that when a person then gets um, dismissed or so, the person cannot be expected to pay back money 
uh, the money that um, was paid for that person during the suspension period. Um, a court case will determine whether they should be paid back of money or so, but if a person is on suspension and lose the suspension, then that person will not be required to pay back um, any of the, um, the money. In the South African law as well, one cannot um, uh, uh, um, this, uh, uh, dismiss a, or suspend a person without paying a person. That would not be um, allowed. So um, the, the other issue was um, the issue of time frames and review. That is very important in the strategy that we will develop. We will indicate um, the time frame for um, uh, reviewing the disciplinary code. Of course, um, any legislative amendments is not a, a week or two's work. Um, in some instances, it can take up to three, week, to three years and even up to 10 years. But um, that review we will indicate and um, in the, the, the um, uh, strategy and um, of course then work uh, at a pace that we really need to work to address this, this situation and this issue. Um, there was a, a, a question also on how the department deal with um, the reporting. Um, what we do is um, we have a template that we send to the departments under that circulars that I've mentioned. So the departments know exactly what information they need to report to us. We've extended the um, template that it now also includes information on employees conducting business with the state. We also uh, look at issues of where people apply for permission to do other remunerative work. And that is now um, in excess of this um, uh, information that we want on suspensions and on um, uh, misconduct. So that information is collected in a monthly um, fashion. It then gets uh, um, analyzed to see sending the statistics and then is followed up telephonically from the uh, TAU unit where there's then engagements with those units to say, or the departments to say they are um, outstanding and they need to submit. So by the, the fourth quarter, this information is then integrated into the FOSAT report that, we, um, uh, that I've mentioned. And this FOSAT report is then just a collection of all this information that is prepared in a report format that goes to the um, DG and then uh, from there to the Minister for the Public Service and Administration. This is then tabled at the FOSAT report where it's then discussed with the DGs and um, the issues that um, is emanating from that report are addressed with them. Now, there was also the question about um, the, the, the um, allegations of corruption in the Department of Health, the investigations and, and that that took place. Now, the, the technical assistant unit has no mandate to act as a, a, a law enforcement agency. We cannot uh, do investigations in terms of corruption and crime. What we have done is in the anti-corruption task team where we sit as, a, as the DPSA, we've reached out to the fusion center where uh, that is a, a center where all the law enforcement agencies are pulled to look at the corruption in government especially around COVID and PPE fraud and the tender frauds and so forth. So when the cases get investigated there, then it, um, the, the, this unit has a role to say, give us the, the names of the people so that we can run it through our systems and see whether those members are um, then uh, uh, public servants. When we found that they're public servants, then we draft letters to the departments to indicate to them that you have the following people that are, um, and that is now when the investigation is completed. When they found that they, they are um, criminally um, uh, charged, then we write to the departments to indicate to them there must be a concurrent disciplinary process that runs with this process so that when a person gets convicted, there's also a disciplinary action taken against them. That, of course, the, the, the unit and the DPSA cannot take um, that is the responsibility of that um, department because it's a decentralized process. But we then know who the individuals are and then we can follow up with the process and um, make sure that there is um, 
the disciplinary action taken. That, that is the, the, the um, gist of all the technical questions, but I did take note of um, the, the, the urgency of this issue and that um, we need to have um, a, a movement on this situation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, just for my part, a few issues. I, I just want to say that firstly, the, the frustration of the honorable members and the disappointment of the honorable members, I, I share with them in the sense that um, after so much hard work that we have put as the team in respect to this area of work, as you can see, there's very little improvements that we are registering, which do not even mean a, uh, not mean much compared to uh, the cost uh, that uh, some of these areas were dealing with, like uh, involved in discipline management imposed on the state. And I think that um, uh, I, I want to clarify a few things that the Department of Public Service and Administration uh, coordinates and monitors the work. The department is not an implementer. We are an implementer as far as cases specific to the department are concerned. So as the DGTPSA, I am responsible to account for the cases of discipline management that are at DPSA. This is now in terms of the mandates and the laws of the country currently we are operating under. DGs in other departments are responsible to account for their cases. So DPSA has no um, consequence management and discipline management responsibility over DGs in other province, in other departments. So I can't as DG DPSA go to another department to discipline. All I can do in terms of the current instruments that we have is to raise the matters or concerns with the other DG, with the colleague formally to say, these are the areas of concerns, please focus on these particular matters. And if there's no progress, escalate the matters to my minister, who also has no responsibility to hold the minister accountable that side, but except to engage with the minister and raise the issues and request the minister to intervene. Each department has a minister who's responsible for, con for, for consequences management over a DG and a DG who, has who is responsible for consequences management over the department. So this is the nature of our architecture or system in terms of um, um, HR in the public service. All responsibilities are delegated to departments and we monitor, we provide norms and standards and we report on those norms and standards. So um, to do to be able to do what some of the members are expecting are expecting to be done, there is a, a need for an overhaul, including the change of the laws that we have currently. We would need to change the Public Service Act to allow us to intervene in the manner that members are want us to intervene as a department. Obviously, would need have, to have capacity to be able to do that. Would need to change the disciplinary code of practice to allow us as Department of DPSA to run um, uh, hearings and other processes of discipline in, an, in another department. Currently, it can't be done with the current laws that we have. So I thought I must raise that particular issue, Chair. And um, there was a question about why people remain suspended for long. Um, I, I, it's a number of reasons, and some of them have been highlighted. In fact, all have been highlighted in the presentation. There are cases that are complex by their nature. If it's a case of corruption involving technical issues like financial investigations, those cases are usually complex by their nature and they take longer in the system um, uh, to investigate. There are officials who get suspended and there are strong cases against them, but they play the delaying tactics because they understand how the system works. The system as it is configured has a number of loopholes and those officials would understand those loopholes. Some of them are senior in departments and some of them have been in the service for longer. So they understand the system, how it operates. And they will also, what officials do is that they also do what we call forum shopping. So whilst there's a disciplinary happening in the department, they will go to the public protector, they will go to the PSC, they will go to the uh, bargaining council to lodge dispute and grievances. 
and these things tend to impact and have a delay on the cases. The third issue also relates to delays imposed on the part of the employer. When the employer, maybe the employer has no case to prove, but they don't want the person to be in the organization, or um, a, a employer is facing other challenges internally, which lead to um, um, a, a delays. And when the employer has no case to, to, to prove, it is important that they bring back the employee. The laws are, provide for this, that they must bring back the employee to the department. If you investigate and you find in your investigation during suspensions that you don't have any case to prove, um, or you complete the investigation and therefore the employee is unlikely to interfere with any processes like witnesses and et cetera during the hearing, you are still in a position to return the employee back to the department and continue with the hearing or else uh, look at placement of the employee in another department whilst the hearing continues. So those are the options that are already in law that DGs must explore when they deal with cases of um, a, 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 a suspensions. There was an issue around officials who are not capturing as well. Uh, we, and, and, and there was a question around what technical assistance are we giving to, or to, to departments as, as DPSA. The team of colleagues led by Dr. Salmo, Salomon literally lives in provinces, supporting, doing workshops and working with departments as well as national departments. We have produced so many guidelines on these particular issues. And the reason why colleagues are still not capturing, it's simply because um, uh, they are not managed properly in doing their jobs. They are not oversighted properly in their departments in doing their jobs. So. Um, and as DPSA, we, we don't have the capability to go to each and every department and ensure that they are capturing. We have issued guidelines around capturing uh, linked to um, a, 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 our PESAL system. And that is the source of data that we use. And all departments know that this is the source of data that we use in order to be able to do that. So Chair, I, I thought that uh, the other questions, uh, um, my colleague, Dr. Solomon, has attended to them, and I'm not going to to um, uh, to share much. But uh, my last comments are: I think Honorable Komane, Komane raised a number of issues um, about. Um, um, I think the disappointment, and that as the department, we are not bringing anything tangible to the committee. And I've explained how we are set up as the department and the, how we interface with this type of work and the results that we're getting uh, from departments are the results that we're sharing with the committee. Yes, they are not ideal, but um, um, uh, the interventions that we do from our part, we do these reports to FOSAT, we do these um, uh, reports also to our minister internally in the department, and we engage with DGs in respect to that. And uh, it is not in our intention to mislead the committee. And the information that we bring to this committee is information, is data that we have in the system that we are pulling out from PESAL. And PESAL is our official mechanism of reporting in respect to this particular information. And the departments are aware of that. So it, it's never our intention to come here and mislead the committee. And I can, I can confirm to the committee that the facts and data and statistics that we are sharing right now is information that we have, as a, that, that is data that is coming from PESAL. Those departments that do not put data from in PESAL, that do not capture data in PESAL, we are unable to access this data. And we continuously remind departments to ensure that their information um, um, is not, um, uh, is added is, 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 is on PESAL. And there was a question about what is our advice to the committee? What interventions can the committee do? We have advised previously and we're advising again that we can work with the committee and identify some of the departments or, 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 or yes, departments that um, contribute significantly to this expense, like we did with the minister previously to identify ministries, uh, departments that contribute extensively and that have longer standing uh, cases to appear in the committee so that they can also explain directly themselves to the committee what's going on in their departments. The previous minister, Minister Mkunu, did an exercise with provinces 
and national ministers that were having long standing suspensions and that were uh, uh, contributing extensively on the course and had engagements with them. They made commitments, the ministers to go back to the departments. And we've seen some departments exceedingly improving in relation to this, but some of them are falling back now. We saw departments like Department of Higher Education really moving with some of their cases which were sitting long in the system. But now departments uh, are going back um, to faltering. And we, when, we, when we had briefings with our minister, the acting minister, we indicated that there is a need again for the minister to engage with some of these departments. And I think that the portfolio committee has space to engage there so that um, the DGs could understand the seriousness of these matters beyond um, uh, the interface that they have with the DPSA as a department. So that would be my proposal to the committee as part of the areas that um, uh, you could assist and, and intervene. Thank you, Chair. Let me uh, thank the Deputy Minister uh, and her team. Chair, before, before thanking them, Chair, Chair, I'm sorry. Um, uh, you are making me to chair clumsily now. I'm so sorry, Chairperson. I wanted to correct uh, uh, the, the contributions of the um, portfolio committee uh, as to what uh, really we are really meaning. I'm so sorry, Chairperson, if you may allow. Thank okay, you. let me allow you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I, I wanted to correct uh, the perspective uh, of the portfolio committee to say we wouldn't be, as the portfolio committee, we wouldn't be that ignorant to expect DPSA to go from department to department for hearings. But what we really mean for disciplinary measures, we mean that DPSA should devise a strategy that is a guide to the public service, and then let the departments act on, 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 the, on DPSA's own framework in fighting the sketch. I, I wanted to correct that one, Chairperson, that really we know that they, they are trying their level best, as they've alluded to, but at least uh, it is the GPA that comes up, uh, up uh, with the notebook for, for the ministerial notebook. Uh, nothing can stop the, uh, uh, sorry, DP, DPSA to come up with the framework of, 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 of uh, 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 fighting this sketch. That, that, that is uh, uh, exactly what the portfolio committee was trying to suggest, Chairperson, by the disciplinary measures. Thank you. Well explained, Honorable Julie. Uh, well explained. I hope now the department understands what the portfolio committee wants and what the uh, portfolio committee means. Uh, as I said, let me thank the, the deputy minister and her staff and also thank the honorable members for availing themselves for this portfolio committee and also thank everyone for wonderful contributions made to, to the meeting. And then we unfortunately have come <laughs> to the end of the meeting now and I declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Thank Chair. You, Chair. Long live the Chairperson. Long live. Recording stopped.